Hello, Trista Tutors. Welcome. Today, I'll be giving a brief overview of inquiry-based learning, or IBL. I'll be talking about, well, what is IBL? How does it differ from more traditional forms of learning? And most importantly, why does it matter to us as Twisted Tutors? Hopefully, by the end of this video, well, you'll get a bit of an appreciation for the beauty of inquiry-based learning and might choose to incorporate it into your own Twisted Tutoring. So first of all, traditional learning methods, what are they? Well, these learning methods have been designed for the classroom. Probably the most famous example is direct instruction. This is where you have, well, an instructor, a teacher, a professor standing in front of a classroom full of students as they give out their lesson. They may have slides and presentation. They may have their own little lecture notes, but ultimately they speak, they demonstrate, and the students listen and take notes. So direct instruction is a very instructor-oriented form of learning. The instructor, well, they get to plan out the lesson. They get to write down their own lesson notes, devise their own slides, and basically choose what to talk about, how they'll talk about it, and how to present information. Importantly, the way of, of approaching different concepts is given by the instructor. They might choose to give different approaches to the same topic, so offering a bit of you know, versatility for different ways of thinking, but ultimately they're the one presenting. They're showing the students, they're demonstrating to the students how to approach this topic. And all the students receive the same information. There are benefits to this type of learning. Well, it's great for classrooms. The instructor doesn't have time to go to each student and tailor their lesson. They need to devise a general you know, structure that hopefully accompanies most students. In addition, well, by presenting how to think of different concepts, they'll give students a basis to work off of. And it might be efficient if the students can just adopt the way, you know, the way of thinking that the instructor has presented, well, they can then apply it to different practice questions. But there are major flaws. Most importantly, well, it doesn't accompany or accommodate for all students. Some students might get a poor understanding. They might be stuck on a concept. You know, the, the ways of thinking that the instructor presented might not be compatible with what they already know. They may get confused. They might, well, you know, get a sense of what's going on, but ultimately fail to be able to apply it in a versatile way when it comes to maybe some challenging questions. Another form of traditional learning is rote learning. Here we have a little passage kind of describing what, what is rote learning. Becky reads the same chapter on electrical circuits. She reads carefully, making sure she reads every word. She goes over the material, memorizing the key facts. When she is asked to recall the material, she can remember almost all of the important terms and facts in the lesson. She's able to list the major components in an electrical circuit However, when Becky is asked to use the information to solve problems, she cannot. So rote learning, commonly known as brute force memorization, is another form of learning that often takes place in classrooms. This might be, well, you might be studying biology and memorizing the name of bones of blood vessels. It could be chemistry. You're trying to memorize well, the names of different compounds. But this happens a lot. It's not necessarily a bad form of learning, it just has its own flaws. Well, it's characterized by memorization by repetition. Almost like, imagine using flashcards. Flashcards work because as you go through the flashcard set over and over, your brain slowly associates you know, the terms to the definitions. And thus, hopefully on a test, you can try to recall that information when cued. However, this type of learning lacks understanding. You're only memorizing specific fragments of information. You might not be connecting them. You might not be able to use them if the situation changes. And thus, this form of learning is also not optimal because, well, when it comes to challenging questions and when, you know, practice questions force students to apply their learning into new situations, learners who chose to use rote learning might not be able to do so.
But now we've arrived at inquiry-based learning. The key word here is inquiry, asking questions. Now, imagine you're a math teacher and you've just presented your students with this question. Your class has done, let's say, you know, some basic algebra, some one variable equations. But now you've presented your students with a question with, you know, seemingly three variables. And understandably, they're quite confused of how to approach this. So imagine a student comes up to you and asks, hi, excuse me, um, I'm not too sure what to do here. I, I know for one variables, I can like move the numbers, you know, subtract them and add them over to the other side of the equation and then divide things to isolate X. But here we have so many variables, I'm not sure where to start. Now, as a teacher, you might be tempted to tell them, well, for this question, you see how the first line you have three palm trees or let's just say three X equals 30. Well, you can divide the three over, find out that X equals 10 and then substitute that value into the second equation. And, you know, your student with that information would probably be able to figure out the question. They now understand, you know, kind of a framework of thinking for how to solve it. And that's that's fantastic. But the downfall with this type of teaching is that you've practically told your student what to do. Of course, they can apply what you've told them to future scenarios, but they didn't really think for themselves in the situation. And the problem is that if they receive another curveball question down the line, Again, they'll be too reliant on receiving external help and not thinking for themselves and solving the question with what they already know. So how would we approach this from a standpoint of inquiry-based learning? Well, again, the scenario might be your student comes up to you and asks, well, I don't know what to do. Instead of answering them, you can ask them questions. So a first question I might go with, I might go with is, well, does this resemble anything we've done in class so far? And the student might go like, um, kind of, I get kind of how each image is like its own variable, but there's three of them. And I don't know what to do with that. I know in class we've done one variable equations, but this is a bit too confusing. And you might be like, okay, that's good. Um, well here, how many statements do you kind of see? You know, how many sets, ignoring the last one, which we need to figure out, how many statements do you see? And the student might go like, well, I guess I see three. And you're like, good. Um, now, do you think that if you just took one of these statements, you know, if you picked out one, could you find one that kind of resembles what, we, what we've what we done in class if you get to ignore the other ones? And the student might go, well, hmm. I guess if you look at the first one, if I ignore everything else, it kind of looks like we, you know, you have an equation that says x plus x plus x equals 30. So there's only one variable there. And you'd be like, great. So following what we did in class, what do you think the value of x is for that expression? And they might go like, okay, well, 3x equals 30. Okay, I guess I'll divide x over, uh, sorry, get, divide 3 over, so x equals 10. And you'd be like, great. And now you, you can ask, well, do you know what you can do with that information? And your student might be like, I'm not sure. I like looking at the second equation. Now we have two variables and I'm not sure what to do about that. So here, another question you can ask is instead of telling them what to do, you can ask, well, what have we found out so far? Again, let's recap. What have we found out so far? And they might answer, well, we found out that the palm tree equals 10. And so you can ask, well, do you think knowing that the palm tree equals 10 can help you figure out the second equation? And they might realize, oh, I guess if the palm tree equals 10, then the second expression is almost like 10 plus, um, you know, this pot plus another pot equals 38, or 10 plus y plus y equals 38. And you might, you can then be like, great, yeah. So in this case, now can you solve for the pot or y? And they will go like, yeah. And you can ask them, well, and again. How did you, how are you, why was it that at first there was two variables and you couldn't solve the expression, but now you were able to, what happened? What changed? And then my answer, well, I guess if we figured one of them out, then we can, you know, make it a one variable equation and then solve for the other. And you'd be like, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I wanted to teach. And in this way, the student figured out for themselves 
they didn't need to be told that, oh, to solve multivariable equations, you need to isolate the value of one of them and then substitute the value into other equations, which is a very wordy response and not one that sticks well in the brain, not, especially not one that can be applied um, in a very versatile way. Instead, by getting your students to find the answer for themselves by directing specific questions at them, they've realized firsthand why it is that you need to substitute values into different equations and isolate them. They've, you know, gotten to figure that out firsthand. And that not only boosts their confidence, but leads to more versatile application down the line. Inquiry-based learning is learner-oriented. The instructor is not supposed to simply tell the student what to think. However, they can simply aid them. They can push them in the right direction. But ultimately, it's the learner, the student, who takes charge of their own learning. And how does this happen? Through questions. Questions are the basis of inquiry. When a student is confused, we should not be tempted to simply give them the answer. Maybe one step better than giving them the answer is giving them the way of thinking to reach that answer. But even then, it might be even more effective to instead ask questions back at them. When they have questions, don't reply with answers, reply with more questions. Surely the questions have to be tailored so the students, well, you know, like in the demonstration, the questions are tailored so it kind of forces the student to retrieve what they already know and start connecting the dots themselves. But this promotes a much deeper form of learning. It promotes independence, it promotes confidence because the student ultimately reaches the answer by themselves. Well, not completely by themselves, with some help, sure, but they've just answered all the questions they've given you. You've not told them any answers. They've just found the answers. Well, they found the line of thinking that gets them to the answer. And this also promotes confidence because, well, if you just told them the answer, then, you know, they might come, come out of it being, you know, a bit disappointed that they couldn't think that way, that they didn't really realize. I was like, oh, of course, I was so obvious. And that might be discouraging. But by promoting this type of inquiry-based learning, if it's successful, the student will feel like they've done the work themselves because they have. You've only helped them link all the dots together. And so what is the goal of inquiry-based learning? The goal is not to bashing information, the most effective way into your learner's head. It's not to give your learners the answers to the questions they'll need to solve on the test. It's to build a scaffold of knowledge, a way of thinking. By asking them questions, you'll be promoting, well, inquiry-based learning. The student might come out of the tutoring session, well, being like, hmm, yeah, I guess those questions got me to the answer. Maybe I should ask those same questions to myself when I'm learning. Maybe if I run into a challenging question on a test, instead of simply trying to brute force recall, oh, what did I learn in the lesson? What did I learn in the lesson? They might approach the question with questions. Well, okay, what do I need to do here? How do I get there? What am I missing? How does this piece of information help? And in the end, they'll leave with a very flexible and adaptive scaffold of knowledge that, well, not only makes them a very versatile learner that can adapt to challenging questions and curveballs, but this actually helps you remember information. Instead of trying to use rote learning, where you remember pieces of, you know, disconnected facts, through inquiry-based learning, when students receive new information, they kind of just hook, they can just hook it onto what they already know. They can be like, oh, so, you know, copper as an ion is blue. Hmm, I wonder why. Oh, maybe it's because, and then, you know, learning has happened here. But ultimately, it's up to you, the Twisted Tutor, to choose how and when you want to incorporate inquiry-based learning into your own tutoring sessions. Of course, the message here is not that, well, you cannot give answers at all. If a student, if a learner is genuinely confused of what to do and after, you know, presenting them with some leading questions to try to get them into the right headspace, they still show that, well, they're just as confused. Maybe they forgot the main concept here. 
and can't seem to remember it, then in those cases, it is important to take a step forward and offer a hand and to give some answers so they can you know, have something to work with. It would be quite frustrating as a learner when you're genuinely utterly confused to simply be thrown more and more questions without getting any help. But the main point here is that when we're tempted to give answers, when we're tempted to deliver solutions on a silver plate, as tutors, as teachers, we should reflect and think, well, can I form this as a question? Can I promote inquiry? Can I get my learner, my student, to reach the answer by themselves? That is the point of inquiry-based learning. And I'm very excited to see how all of you will make use of that.